That's that's adorable. I don't know. They said they were taking a pee break. Well, uh, what a surprise. They're late again. I'm all for traditions, but this one bites. And if you... And if I know them, they're probably off somewhere going. Great topic is Trek show, guys. Nailed it. High five, Clint. Vulcan salute, Chuck. Binary high five, Craig. Come on. First round's on me. Woo! Woo! Uh, which reminds me, I really need to speak to the track director. I'm not sure it's a good idea to have the podcasting panel room right around the corner from Trader Vic's. Do you know, do you know that this is the fourth year in a row they've been late for this panel? It's like they plan it or something. I'm here on time. Why not them? Do you want to know a secret? I actually figured something like this would happen again this year. So I said to myself, Bonnie, if they're late again, you should. Oh, I, I shouldn't say. Should I? Should I do it? Oh, well then. Welcome to the Bonnie Show. <laughs> Starring me, Bonnie. <laughs> um, thank you. You are a lovely audience, very lively. <laughs> uh, my first skit is um my name is Danny Hillcrest and I never see movies. Uh who 
coherence from out of town. Are you here for the convention? Yeah. Uh, and how about that weather? Peach tree. Gee, this is harder than I thought. Oh, they'll probably be back here in a minute anyway. And we already have some great stuff planned for the show. So let's dog ear the Bonnie show for now. But I think we should still make them a little jealous that they weren't here on time. I have an idea. I have an idea. Are you up for giving me a hand? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Every time any one of them says Bonnie, you all go, oi, oi, oi. All right, let's practice that. Hey, everybody, welcome to our show. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. I'm Clinton, and this is Chuck and Craig. And, oh, and Bonnie. <laughs> that, that was wonderful. That ought to teach them a lesson. Or my name isn't Bonnie. <laughs> yeah. Are we late? Um, I don't think you want to hear my answer. Oh, uh, well, uh, then uh, I think we better start. Hi, um, yeah. welcome to our show, uh, Technorama Comedy Forecast. I'm Clinton, one of your hosts, and this is Chuck, and this is Craig. I'm the Craig. And uh, uh, this is Bonnie. Okay. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but that is, that's new. Okay. Something new. Uh, before, did we, get, did we just jump to Australia? Or I think I think so. Uh, we're going to go to Outback. Uh, I want to make sure I <laughs> mention Blue this, onions. but uh, the Dragon Con charity uh, for 2024 is the Arthritis Foundation, the number one cause of disability. Arthritis affects nearly 60 million adults and hundreds of thousands of children, just not an old person these days. Dragon Con matches up to $125,000 last year. We, last year, we raised $272,000 for the 2023 charity. So we have a, a, a bucket up here. If you have cash, I believe there's also a code right down there that you can scan to make a donation in another way. And I also want to mention our track sponsor yes. for 2024 is Zakat. For over 22 years, they've been empowering lives through disaster relief, food distribution, orphan care, and more. Their top-notch ratings from Charity Navigator, which I know is important to a lot of people, and Better Business Bureau's Wise Giving Alliance means your contributions are going to make a difference. And that is, I'll spell it because it's not like it sounds, it's a... Z A K A T dot org. And there's also, I think, a QR code someplace for that one as well. All right. Make sure we get that in there. All right. Good deal. Front. Zakat, wasn't he on Deep Space Nine? Uh, no, I think that's the travel guide you're thinking oh. of. Uh, <laughs> travel guide. All right. So, Chuck, I believe you've got something here for us. Do I? Do you? I do. Oh, okay. See, normally. Normally, we have a history segment at this point, and people step up to the microphone and announce what happened on this day in history. Well, we thought we'd do something a little different this year, so we asked about 150 people to give us random nouns, dates, whatever, and then we fed this into the very complex algorithm on our Technorama computer and came up with... An alternate history. So we would still love to have you participate. If you care to step up to the microphone and read some of the events that are on the screen, this is our alternate history for On This Day in History for today. So I am going to bring this up. And we will... Oh, we need to play the music too. Hold on. All right, we got to get the music going. There we go. 
history without that. On this day in history for September 1st, 2024, this is the 245th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. There are just 121 days remaining in 2024. Who's our first victim volunteer? Yay! Yay! It was on this date in 1272, at the age of only five, Popeye became king of France in succession to his great grandfather, <laughs> the Beauty Dog. <laughs> the Beauty, that sounds very French. <laughs> Here comes Nathan from the next one. At the same date in 1492, Shirley Temple was made Mar Marquess of Stonehenge by her fiance. Ryan Reynolds of <laughs> Australia. We may have gotten a few facts wrong you know, on I this think alternate that's, that's, history. That tracks as being true. I think, it's, I think it's legit. One. Legit. It's got some tricky pronunciations. Three theories, musical work, Vespro della Beata Virgin. Was first published, printed in Turkmenistan, and dedicated to Kung Fu Panda on this date. <laughs> Had yeah, no idea. Yeah. Man Mar! You love this one. September 1st, 1919. Thomas Edison and his student, Dr. Emmett Brown, <laughs> published the Edison Brown model, proving for the first time in contemporary physics how creme brulee could develop. Yes. It's a very legit. Fact. Fact. Yeah. We checked, Who's next? We checked these out with Chat GPT. They're perfect. He's got another one coming up. Also today in 1975, the <laughs> robot vacuum set and holds the record for the flying for flying from Honduras to Bangladesh in the time of one hour, fifty-four minutes, and fifty-six point four seconds. They were point, accurate. Thank you, Elvis. Thank you, Elvis. Who knew? Who knew? Everybody's here. Even if they're dead, they're here. It's amazing. Who's next? Your wife in the back? Come on. Joe's uh, going to get up here. Oh, Joe's going to be there. Oh, Joe. Joe. Awesome. Perfect. Central African president, this piggy, was ousted <laughs> from power in a bloodless military coup led by General Big Bird <laughs> on this date in 1970. Yes. Only the Muppets fan could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, Benny, there's Anybody else? More. Come on. Oh, here you go. There we go. That's the fresh blood. Fresh blood. Here we go. Cheesecake. One of the largest asteroids in the main belt was discovered by the Slovenian astronomer Charles Darwin today in 1979. Yes. So it, close. That one might question a little bit on the hey, facts on that one. By the way, the cheesecake factory was here. I did not know that. That's yeah. the, the, Sense, Come on, we got a few more. Yeah. Come on. We're almost done. We got three more. After it was on this date in 1982. Taj Mahal, the first one built in modern Lithuania, was destroyed by SpongeBob SquarePants. Wow. That's like a drive by comment. Fast facts of the day. Yeah, that that right now. Jeez. Anybody? Anybody over here? Come on. There we go. Don't be shy. Also, on this date, 1996, Dr. Thum, a Mexican engineer and designer, invented the washing machine. Yeah, very little known fact, but yes. Very little known. Yes. All right, Almost last like one, last up. one. Here we go. And finally, it was today in 2012 that Caroline, who didn't wear her goggles, and now she doesn't need them anymore <laughs> because became the world's first female weed whacker operator yeah when she is recruited by johnny hey baby uh johnny bravo to the walmart company eye protection is very important you, johnny Carol. bravo yeah. hey baby that's the way it was <laughs> on the history for september 1st 2024 hey, never forget your eye wear your eye protection wear yeah, there's there's an important lesson in there somewhere. Oh, Johnny Bravo came up a little too early in the, in the rotation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm... <laughs> Wait a minute now, this just can't be. And back we are. Mama. That's right. 
Well, thank you to all our participants. Absolutely, absolutely. You were all great. Yeah. All right, so for our next bit, uh, we decided to go all in on having Google's Gemini AI write a skit for us. AI is so helpful these days. It, it is indeed. We, we did this uh, last year, but we actually wrote the bit ourselves. We thought, no, really, with this time, we're going to have Gemini do it. So I put in a prompt saying, can you create a short skit that involves Clinton, the host of the Comedy Forecast Comedy Podcast show, and Chuck and Craig, the co-host of the Technorama Podcast show? We got back a script Gemini called Comedy Podcast Crossover Chaos. And we're about to perform that for you. We've only made a few minor modifications just for logistics reasons. Uh, also, Gemini included all the stage directions, and some of those are for us. Some of them Bonnie will read. But the rest are going to be for you. Bonnie will... Why does that keep happening? I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll we'll a hold landmine. up a sign yeah. with your instructions like this one. Perfect. There you go. Well done. Yes. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Good luck. Fade in. <laughs> What a weird, wild audience we have here tonight doing the theme know, for right? us. Yeah. Wild. Bum, it's bum, wild. Bum, bum, ba -da, ba -da. We don't have the we don't think we can't possibly pay for that royalty. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, stop. Welcome back to another <laughs> and remember, this was written for us here. Welcome back to another side splitting episode of the comedy forecast. Uh, today we're breaking down the fourth wall and crossing streams podcast style. Joining me in the studio are the tech titans themselves, Chuck and Craig from the Technorama podcast. Golf clap here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's Craig get. Pulls out, is that it? Yes. Craig pulls out a bulky VR. No, 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 no. no. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and oddly enough, after that sign is the thing, then the next thing we're supposed to say is, let's give it up for the Tech Boys. So, Chuck well, and Craig, I, I, what brings you to the wacky world of comedy? Well, Clinton, you might be surprised to learn that tech can be pretty darn funny. Glitches, autocorrect fails, the whole nine yards. Yeah, as a matter of fact, speaking of yards, check out this new virtual reality lawnmower simulator bought. Virtual reality lawnmower. Yeah. Greg pulls out a bulky VR headset with a weed whacker attached. Yeah, where's the wrist? Ow! Ooh! Well, uh, mm. that part too. There we go. Wait a minute. Now it's complete. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Craig, buddy, maybe leave the virtual reality experience at home. Let's stick to some sort of uh, less combustible jokes. Uh, how about we play a game? Oh. So, sounds perfect. How about techie puns or punchlines? You give us a tech term, and we have to make you laugh with a tech-related joke. Wait. I don't know any jokes. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> don't worry. Just go with the flow. Okay. All right. All right, techies, hit me. First term, pop up window. Uh, why did the computer cross the? Wait, that's not tech. Um, pop up, pop up. Oh man, this is harder than I thought. Oh, after a beat. <laughs> okay, here's one. Why did the web developer go bankrupt? I, I do not know why. <laughs> because he used up all his cash. Ooh, hell. Mm. I'm surprised it doesn't say audience groans, but they did it anyway, so there we go. <laughs> okay, here's one for you, Bluetooth. <laughs> what do you call a fish with no Bluetooth? Fin-dependent. Oh, 
Chuck and Craig high five. There we go. <laughs> okay. My turn. Hold on. Spam filter. All right. Let's hear it. What do you call unwanted emails sent from a... Suddenly a, suddenly a loud, distorted voice blasts from the VR headset. <laughs> Greetings, fellow humans. Today's virtual lawnmower experience includes a bonus feature. Unsolicited marketing messages delivered directly to your brain. Oh. Craig fumbles with the headset in a panic. Uh, Craig, a, a little help here? I, I can't... I can't find the uninstall button in the virtual reality, and it's starting. I'm starting to hear banjo music. That's right, folks. Now you can enjoy classic country music while you mow your virtual lawn. Yeah! That's right, folks. Now you can enjoy classic country music sense. while you mow your virtual lawn. Yeah! He does it a third time. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, uh. I can't. Ah, ah. Craig, well, uh. Craig yelling incoherently. <laughs> well, folks, it seems our uh, crossover episode has taken an unexpected turn. Uh, we'll try to get this under control during a commercial break. Stay tuned. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. I'm out. Nope. Can I remove this now? Calling all nerds, geeks, and pop culture enthusiasts. Are you tired of those boring traditional colleges offering the same old basket weaving and existential angst classes? Do you yearn for a more enlightened learning experience well hold on there enlightened or just plain strange where am i headed clown college nope clinton welcome to the inaugural year of nerd U, the only university where you where your love of all things nerdy gets you a diploma wait so no more hiding my lord of the rings marathon schedule Absolutely parents? not, Captain Craig. Thank you. Nerd U offers a plethora of unique courses to ignite your inner geek, from underwater basket weaving for mermaids to advanced conspiracy theory, reptilians among us. We have a class for every niche obsession. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Underwater basket weaving? That sounds more dangerous than exciting. Hey, don't knock it till you try it, Clinton. Imagine the bragging rights. And that's not all. Nerd U boasts a dedicated faculty of pop culture experts, including a tenured professor who can recite the entire B-movie script from memory. Intriguing, but what about extracurricular act activities <laughs> like, <laughs> I still, like, English. like, spe <laughs> like speaking? Uh, can I still participate in Klingon Opera Club? <laughs> Save the singing for later. Not only is that encouraged, Craig, but Nerd U also offers official credit for participation in approved fan clubs. Ooh, now you're talking. Imagine getting a B plus in advanced lightsaber choreography. My mama would be so proud. This sounds incredible. Where do we find out more? Head over to Invalid URL removed and secure your spot in Nerd U's first semester. Use code Comedy Forecast for a free semester supply of pizza and Mountain Dew. Pizza and Mountain Head Dew. Head over to Invalid URL removed. Forget, forget the diploma, Chuck. I'm in. Of course you are, Clint. How about remembering to bring your good swim trunks for the underwater basket weaving? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Swim trunks? Weren't we just talking about lightsabers? This school's already giving me a headache. Invalid URL for bring a scratch. <laughs> Hold on a minute, Craig. This underwater basket weaving thing, that sounds suspiciously aquatic. Exactly, Chuck. And mermaids. Did you hear not hear the announcer mention mermaids? 
This could get interesting, yeah. Interesting or just plain dangerous? I ain't exactly comfortable with the idea of weaving baskets while surrounded by mythical sea creatures with a penchant for luring sailors to their doom. Look, the mermaids are all very friendly and safety certified, ah. mostly. What? Yeah. Come on, Clint. Think about the stories you could tell. The semester I spent battling rogue seaweed and outsmarting grumpy mermaids while crafting the world's first underwater wicker basket. All right, all right, you win. But if I get <laughs> if, if I get eaten by a giant sea turtle while trying to braid some kelp, I'm holding you personally responsible. Hey, speaking of holding people responsible, what about housing for this situation for nerd you? Do they offer dorm rooms themed after our favorite sci-fi franchises? Absolutely, Craig. We have dorms modeled after the Millennium Falcon, the TARDIS, and even a replica of the Hogwarts Common Room. Ooh, Hogwarts Common Room, you say? Well, does that mean that they'll have magic uh, lessons? Because I've been practicing my wand movement for years, and I'm itching to put them to good use. Oh, Clint, buddy. Nerd U is all about celebrating fandoms, not actually practicing magic Aww. Aww. You're bonnie holds up sign oh, no. reading commercial break end yes. <laughs> 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 even if she says it it's going to be so And we're back. Things got a little uh, via radical uh, with uh, your lawnmower simulator. Any progress on the rogue country music situation? Unfortunately, no. Craig here managed to uninstall the unsolicited marketing messages, but the banjo music seems permanently embedded. Craig puts on noise canceling headphones. Oh, they're back here. Wait, they're over there. <laughs> Sorry. I'll put the earbuds in. There we go. <laughs> It's like digital ghost hunting in my ears. Well, let's move on before the studio gets too honky tonk. How about a new segment? We call this one, Would a Techie Say This? Ooh. I give you a phrase, and you tell me if a real techie would actually utter it. Sounds interesting. Hit us with your first phrase. All right. My internet connection is moving at the speed of a sloth on tranquilizers. <laughs> Absolutely not. A real techie would use more specific language like they'd say something like, I'm experiencing significant latency issues, possibly due to packet loss. Craig, nod, Craig nods vigorously, still wearing headphones. <laughs> Okay, good to know. Here's another one. Wait a minute. Hmm. Yes, that's a, there's gonna you missed your big line there. Hmm. M H M. Hmm. Okay, good to know. Uh, here's another one. There's a pop-up ad following me around the house. Craig rips off the headphones. <laughs> oh. Wait, that's exactly what happened to me with a toaster I bought online. Craig. Toasters don't forget it. Forget it. Remember the flying toaster? Moving on, Clinton. <laughs> that phrase is also highly <laughs> unlikely. A techie would likely troubleshoot for malware or adware. All right. You guys are getting good at this. One last one. Can you explain this app to me in layman's terms? Every, Every single day. I did not think that joke was going to get a laugh, but apparently it did. Uh, so, see, that's the techie spirit. So, Thank you, generative AI. So, yeah. so, so, Chuck and Craig, thanks for joining the chaos. Maybe next time we'll stick to jokes that don't involve rogue VR headsets or sentient kitchen appliances. Oh, sounds like a plan. Although, although I'm cautious about the new self-driving vacuum I just ordered. Clinton looks at the ceiling. Uh-oh. Uh Whoa. Maybe we'll save that story for another time. Until next time, folks, keep laughing. <laughs> oh.
Oh, we already did that one. No, flip no, it no, over. Good. That's it. <laughs> yeah, flip it over. Here we go. What the heck is applause? Can applause. Can I take this off now? <laughs> no. No. Yeah. So there was some strange things in that script where I'm supposed to ask the joke, and they're supposed to play the answer. All of a sudden, at one point, Craig is asking the joke that he's supposed to answer himself. It just weird things are going on in that script. Oh, I also want to make sure to mention. Um, the big booming voice you heard coming out of the speakers there, that was John Bell yes. from Bells in the Bat Free. Uh, John has just finished wrapping up. I don't know how many years John has been doing Bells in the Bat Free, probably like 15 uh, years or so. 19. He started in 2005. Okay. And um, so he's going to be doing another. Uh, the, I've heard a couple of the episodes he's going to be doing for something for the Mutual Audio Network, but he's also going to put those on the Bells in the Bat Free feed. So you can check out. All the episodes of his show, which is now 19 years worth of episodes. It's a comedy show, a short, short form comedy show. And his new show is going to be um, stories he's telling. It's mostly going to be him, but he's going to be playing new characters per episode. So think of it like a night gallery type of type of show. Mm. And you can hear that all at The Bat Free, B-A-T-F-R-Y, The Bat Free. So thank you, John, for supplying that voice. Yeah, big hand for John. Big hand he's for made John. appearances on this panel before. Yeah, he's he's been a big supporter of our shenanigans. Those who shenan will shenan again. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let us move on to our next thingamajig. Next up, we have a longtime friend of the show. Back again to tell us about everything happening in the world of woven storage products. <laughs> of course, I mean Miss Abby Fallmacher. Hello, everyone. I'm Abby Fallmacher, owner of the Little Wicker Basket Company. Little Wicker Baskets. They're everywhere. Come on in. And whether you're looking for a basket big enough to hold everything you bought over at America's Mart, or or small enough to hide that 12th level orc figurine you swiped from the gaming room, we have you covered. First of all, I'd like to say what an honor it is to be invited back here to Dragon Con and this show. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank, thank, thank. I said I'd like to say that, <laughs> but the most I can muster is thanks for dragging me back into this hellscape of never-ending horror. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. So every time you're here, Abby, there's always something seems to be happening new the Little Wicker Basket headquarters. Do you have anything new to share? Oh my goodness, yes. It's been a big year for us. We are a sponsor. We were a sponsor of the Paris Olympics, you know. I I I, I did not know that. Were there any Little Wicker products in the games? Yes. But I'd rather not say much about that. What did you do? Like supply the shoes for the Australian breakdancing team or something? <laughs> Let's move on. Oh, um, I guess it's too close to home there. Well, all right. Uh, uh, what else has been happening? This year, we decided it's time to get back into the movie tie-in business. Oh, really? That's interesting because I've been getting the impression that theaters are dying. Don't say dying to an old person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what I meant was theaters are on life support. Oh, that's not uh, what I, uh, the, they're shutting down. Um, they're, uh, well, they're, they're going dark. Uh, oh, <laughs> Say quit while you're ahead, but we passed that exit a long time ago. Hmm. But you're right, there aren't as many people going to the movies these days. But that doesn't mean you can't have a blockbuster product at the concession stand. Just look at this Dune popcorn bucket, it's sold out. Back in my day, they would have sold that in a plain brown wrapper. Yes, well, I'm sure. Um, fair enough. Uh, I believe you brought a few of the products with you. Yes, I have two examples of our big sellers this year. First, there's this one. 
Um, okay, well, uh, that's uh, it, it's kind of just looks like a regular cornucopia, so I'm not quite sure what that's all about with, with that. Yes, well, we had a ton of these in the warehouse, but with a little imagination, we turned them into a tie-in with Twisters. Ah, I, I, I see. All the, let's see a cow there and it's very good. But wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh my goodness. Twisters. Hold on a second. This is Princess Peach. Yes, that's when we were going to do a tie in with the Mario Brothers movie. Oh, well, were there any other tie ins planned? Absolutely not. Then how do you explain this? Oh, Barbie. <laughs> well, maybe we did try to get into that one. Mm-hmm. Why don't we get back to Twisters? The action in the movie takes place in Oklahoma. They wanted us to include a basket shaped like the Sooner State. But I took a look at a map. That state is shaped all weird. It's like Florida, but the bottom part got chewed off by that doom popcorn bucket. Okay, well, uh, so no state basket. Unfortunately, we had a contract, so I looked through the warehouse. Instead of Oklahoma, we gave them Colorado. Oh, well. <laughs> and they were satisfied with that? Really, so I I threw in Wyoming too. Oh, this is, there you go. Very generous of you. Kansas. Well, I bet those things were flying off the shelf. <laughs> I think you'd better leave the jokes to the audience. Hey, <laughs> thank you, but I think I'll pass on that. Don't say pass on to an old person. <laughs> Sorry, but, well, what was your other big seller this year? We were lucky enough to partner with Marvel to produce merchandise for Deadpool and Wolverine. Ooh, that must have been exciting. I'm picturing a, a red and yellow basket or a wacky multiverse <laughs> basket. Uh, or um, uh, Yes, or the most bland little wicker basket I've ever seen. Uh, what is, in the world does this have to do with Deadpool versus Wolverine? <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> These things are going for a few hundred bucks on eBay. No. Take that, well. Freakazoid Doom Bucket. Okay, well, uh, on that note, I think we better uh, end it here. Don't say end it to an old person. So, yeah. I, I, I okay. want to thank you for coming by today. Uh, Abby, do you have anything else you'd like to say to the audience? Besides... Run? Well, well, yes, besides that. <laughs> it's always wonderful to see all of you here. Puzzling, but wonderful. Hey. And remember, little wicker baskets, they're, they're everywhere. All right, next up, we've got a new game we want to play. You've probably seen this on TV. It's Family Feud. But instead of families, we're going to use sides of the room. And I realize it's a little unbalanced, but that's par for this course. This show is unbalanced. Yeah. We are just going to do the first part of the game where we're going to ask you a question. We polled 100 people to get their answers, and we want you to answer. So if you have a potential answer, raise your hand. And we'll see if it's part of our survey results. And we'll then we'll add up the points and see who wins. You ready to go? Yeah. yeah. All right. We polled 100 people and asked them in a survey to name a bald TV actor. Back here. Okay. I forgot. I, this, is, this is the right side because it's your right. Left side. See how it says right side and left side up there? All right, so right side had a hand up back there. What? Mr. Clean. And of course, the Wi Fi isn't working. That would be a. Yeah. 
Let me let me see if I. <laughs> oh, that was only one X. All right. Left side. Oh. No. Gee, we, Honest, play answer. we have a we have a latency and packet loss issue from the last joke. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. Well, Sir Patrick Stewart, we will accept that. Okay, left side. Do you have another answer? Howie Mandel. Oh, oh dang. I guess I should have been one X, but we'll go with it. The right side. Kyle. Oh, wait, wait. Samuel L. Jackson. Unfortunately, our people did not recognize Samuel L. Jackson. All right, one more for the left side. Mike Coulter. Oh, darn. Right side, you have one chance to steal. Nathan. Vin Diesel. Do we have a Vin Diesel? Oh, let's see who our other answers were. Wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> Avery Brooks. How about Brian Cranston? <laughs> oh, woo. Getting hot in here, in here. And our number one answer. Okay, now that you have a taste of where we're going with this. <laughs> yes. 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 Let's go to round two. Oh, we have to read for the audio podcast. So there was Avery Brooks. Brian Cranston, William Shatner, and Telly Savalas were the unanswered questions. <laughs> we're serving, we surveyed another hundred random people. <clears throat> Name a robot that would make a terrible stand up comedian. Yeah, whatever. Oh, oh, Bender. Oh. Oh. Bender, I think he's kind of funny. Let's see. Do we have Bender? Oh, oh. Good answer, I like that, answer. that was a good one. R2-D2. Ah, Back on. over to the right side. C-3PO make a terrible stand-up comedian. Ah. Darn, this is getting tough. Wait, it's not your side. We're back over here. You're giving them, you're giving them clues right Left here. Left side. That is a very good suggestion. I'm personally no K2S, Don't though. Tell Alan. I like that. That would be a terrible comedian. He's Back here. over here. <laughs> Robbie the robot. There you go. Wait for it. You heard the sound. Sooner or later, it will magic. There it is. There the internet's slow today. Okay. Right side, you have control. You want to try another one? Rosie the robot. Oh, bummer deal. These are all good answers. I'm not sure what's going on here. Leon. Gort. 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 Oh. Gort is on the board in the number one spot. Okay, keep going, right side. What back there? Maximilian, do we have a Maximilian? Oh, rats. Okay, you have one more guess, right side. Oh, they're thinking. Do, 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 do. Nathan. Marvin Robot. He would make a terrible he comedian, would. wouldn't he? he? Would indeed. Yeah, he would. I think so. My dog got run over by a truck. <laughs> uh -huh. Actually, he's kind of funny. <laughs> the planet the size there's, of a brain. A sketch in there for next year. <laughs> yeah. Do we have Marvin? <clears throat> Do we have Marvin? Oh! oh, left side, you have one chance to steal. 
Johnny Five? Guess what? I forgot to count points from the first round. <laughs> and I think it just scored that to the wrong side, but never mind. In this game, the points are meaningless. So you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, round three. We're going to do this. Oh, the other answers? All right. The other answers were. Lol from Star Trek The Next Generation and Johnny Cab. <laughs> These people have a weird sense of sci fi. Okay, let's go through this one real quick. Name a sci fi series canceled too soon. Yeah. Yes. Firefly. What? Oh, come on. What? I, I didn't say where we found these people. Oh, Firefly. Left side. I Didn't you get the hint at how ridiculous this game is? The obvious answers are not up there. Terra Nova, Terra Nova for the left side. First of all, it had to have been canceled too soon, Gary. Yeah. I think they misunderstood that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the interest of time, because we're running short, we're just going to skip ahead. Wait for it. The number five position is? Yes. Oh. Star Trek TOS. Oh. Galactica oh. 19. I think it was canceled right on time. Yeah. Yeah. Arc 2. Mark. Mark. And... The quest or take. Hey, out of this 100, who was the this, demographic? Yes. This is this is dragon. I think this so. is dragon god, and we've even confused the nerds. I'm up here and I'm confused. When the audience is going, what's that? Yes. I think we better survey this guess audience what? for next year's. Game. Yeah, guess what? You got homework for next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for playing Family Feud. Yeah. And now to something more serious. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, what? Okay. So uh, in the previous years, we've done a, a fairy tale. We've asked you guys to come up with phrases for it. We thought we'd give you a break and we would do the story to present to you. So Bonnie is going to kick off our what? story. Again, what? Even. This person over here will uh, will start things off. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Say my wife. I don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> Quest or James. Quest or James. <laughs> okay. Once upon, <clears throat> once upon a time, Way back when this old house was hosted by Bob Vila, there were three little pigs who decided to build their own houses. The first little pig, Oscar, built his home out of bendy straws. The second little pig, Jimmy Dean, <laughs> built his home out of breadsticks. And the third little pig, Hormel, Built his home out of Lego bricks. Okay. I brought a wolf puppet. Did the three of you bring your puppets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're good. We're good. Yes, ma'am. Good. We can keep going. All <clears throat> this new construction caught the attention of one Shift E wolf. Shift E was a devotee of architecture. He was a lover of building materials, and key to our story, he was a rabid fan of pork products. <laughs> One day, he decided to visit the house of Oscar, the pig who made his house out of bendy straws, orange bendy straws, in fact. While snapping a few pictures for his blog, the wind suddenly changed. 
direction, and Shift E's mouth started to water. It's baking! <laughs> little pig, little pig, let me in. I said, little pig, little pig, let me in. It's you, Craig. You're playing Oscar. Mm. Oh. <laughs> It's just that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> rehearsals are everything, believe me. Three rehearsals. It's just that. Bonnie's Those Mai Tais are powerful. Yeah. Huh? It's just that. It's just that Bonnie's puppet is so good. I mean, look at it. Okay. It looks Come like on. a wolf, and mine will. It looks just right. Come on, Craig. We need to keep this moving. All right. That's okay, Craig. Any puppet you have is okay. All right. Guess oh, what it is? <laughs> Bam. Well, maybe okay is too strong of a word, but it'll have to do. Let's start again. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Get bent, loser. Get it bent like the straws? Well, that's right. I'm your worst nightmare. I'm a pig who can't make puns. Or read. <laughs> now get off my property or I'll call the cops. Quit you seeing that in the script? No, no, it's nowhere in here. There's none of that stuff. Even here. though I just read it to him. We have to keep going. So be it, pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Wait. Do we need a sound effect, sound effect sign? <laughs> in your dreams. Buddy. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew down the house made of orange bendy straw. Oh, crap. Now my house looks like a plate of macaroni and cheese. Oscar ran <laughs> off to find shelter at his friend Jimmy Dean's house. And that's exactly where Shift E Wolf was headed, too. That's me. Oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> when the wolf arrived at Jimmy Dean's house, he paused to admire the structure made entirely out of breadsticks. He enjoyed the strategic use of butter as an accent color. But then once again, the wind changed direction and Shift E Wolf's senses were stimulated. Ah, now I smell bacon and ham. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Thanks, Olive Garden. I have an endless supply of these breadsticks. And when you're here, you're totally not family. So scram. Yeah, stick it. Like, stick it. Like, that's right. It's me, Oscar, and I'm st still punning away. Not really. <laughs> what is happening I here? I just rolled it, I guess. As if I had a choice? Nope. So be it, pigs. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Oh, yeah? You and what? Wolf pack. Go buy some Listerine, wolf. Your breath stinks. So the wolf puffed and he puffed and he blew down the house made out of breadsticks. <laughs> Never knew I should have used baguettes. 
Let's beat the hammocks out of here. So Jimmy Dean and Oscar ran off to find shelter at their friend yeah. Hormel's home. And that's exactly where Shift E. Wolf was headed to. Now, Clint, please tell me you don't have a toily puppet. No, of course not. I mean, you see, I brought puppets here. You've seen, you know, Jeffrey the Giraffe and so forth. No, I, I have other puppets. Right. When the wolf Believe it. When the wolf arrived at Hormel's house, he really wasn't in the mood to study the arrangement of the Lego bricks. He just stood there and waited. Sure enough, the wind changed direction and shifty wolf's face curled up to a, an evil smile. Yum, yum, yum! It's time for bacon, ham, and sausage! Little pigs, little pigs, let me in! Who are you calling a ham? <laughs> Damn it, loser! Go buy some new sheep's clothing! Little red lady, who's Granny called? She asked if you wanted a rematch! Face it, Wolf! You have to. Let go that idea to catch us. Bam! Another pig pond. Stranger yeah, Reef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with you. Oh, yeah, it's so unprofessional. Yeah. 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 This? this is ridiculous. This is so what kind of crap is this going on? Yeah. We're, we're I just told you. He, has, he's he told me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You clowns! He's curious! And let's coolly tea paper to the three of you poop for brains! What? All right, let's get to the bottom of this. Who said you could swipe my stick? Wow, that's that sounds pretty dirty, doesn't it? Well, yeah. well I, we just figured it. Don't interrupt me when I'm on a roll. And me, I am always on a roll. Sorry, Toily. Yeah. No, that doesn't cut the cheese, Chuck. The three of you pass those puppets over to Bonnie. Well, I don't think this is oh, oh. <sighs> Okay, here's the end of your fairy tale. The wolf huffs and puffs, uh -huh. but he can't blow the Lego house down. You know why? Because it's built like a brick shit house. That's why. Can I say shit at Dragon Con? <laughs> no? Yeah. Anyway, the three little pigs almost live happily ever after. But the wolf squeals on them for not filling out the proper construction permits. And you know what the moral of the story is? No. You know no. what? Nothing is ever over until the paperwork is done. All right. I gotta go. We're going to put the seat down, everybody. Good night. And see. Uh, and a big hand to Grandpa Choco and Toily for yeah. our big experience. That's right. All right, well, I think it's just about time for us to wrap here. No, we're not going to actually wrap. I mean, to wrap things up. So don't, don't, don't no. Oh, I was gonna... no, please, please don't. Uh, <laughs> don't. I like your... big butts, and I cannot lie. No, no, no. no, no. no. All right. <laughs> so. Tell about a bidet. <laughs> we, we gotta get our plugs in really quickly. You can find me, Clinton, at Comedy Forecast, all one word with the number four. And uh, you guys? Go ahead, Chuck. You can find us by searching for Technorama Podcast. We are over at chuckjack.com, but any search for Technorama Podcast will find us. Yes. And thank you for coming to the all right, show. Thank you. Great thank you, everybody. A lot of fun. You were, you were an absolutely wonderful audience. And that comes from Thank you, Bonnie. What is up with that? I don't know, but they seem hey. to do it a lot. Yeah. I do want to give a give a shout out to Bonnie because she puts up I think they shout it out for you. She puts up with our shenanigans every year, and I certainly appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, throughout the year, I should say. <laughs> she has to put up with Clint all year. Hey, now. <laughs> it's true.
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank All right. you, everybody. We're going to strike. Yeah. Now we have our celebratory post-show celebration. Is it time for my toss? Yeah. Sure. Whatever. Oh, my Craig, the next show we'll get it right. Yeah. <laughs>